What's going on, everybody? This is Kyle Plou for AnyHipHop.com, and I am standing here backstage at the Wilbur Theater in Boston, Massachusetts, with Machine Gun Kelly, the first guy, not the first guy, but the first white guy to ever win a battle. What are you about to say? Are you about to mention the Apollo? Yeah. There was no battle, and I was the first guy, period, first rapper. There was no battle, so tell us a little bit about what that's all about. Yeah, well, I mean, Amateur Night at the Apollo is a, is a legendary night uh, because... I mean, you know, all the stars have come from there, like Lauryn Hill, Michael Jackson. I mean, everyone's done the Apollo, you know, and uh, Amateur Night is basically you just go out there amongst the, uh, a, like, it's like a contest, basically. So it's not about, it's a contest, and it's, okay. I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm on to say, like, 12 people, and uh, they come out and they test their talents, and, you know, you have a dan you can have, like, a dance team, you can have, like, a bunch of soul singers, you can have a guitar player, you can have a motherfucker jacking his dick off. You never know, like, whatever, if you're talented at it and you try out, they'll let you come on the show. So I tried out. The trial story was a whole other story in its in and of itself, but mm -hmm. um, I ended up coming there or getting invited back. Went on stage or went on, went on stage, did my thing. Um, ended up getting booed before they even cheered for me. And the thing is, if you get too many boos, you're up. A Sandman comes, like yeah. the, the Sandman you're comes, up. and he tap dances you <laughs> off the stage. So uh, you know, I started getting the boo. I'm like, I didn't even fucking say anything yet. Like this mm -hmm. is crazy. And uh, I, I ended up winning him over, man. And I won first place that night. Came back, did my thing again. Won first place again. I became the first rapper to win first place at the Apollo. Really, so that's crazy. Yeah. So what went through your head? And like that stage is in Harlem, in the in yeah. the heart in the heart of Harlem. And you know that 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 crowd is a is a is a harsh crowd. So winning that was a very proud moment. So when you first started getting booed, like did something switch in your head that you're like, I need to fucking step it up right now, or nah, just I, they didn't even give a fucking chance to speak yet. <laughs> so I, I, so, so I, you just yeah, walked out. I was, more, I was more sitting there like. It was one of them things. I, I just like dropped the mic. Like, I, I haven't even used this yet. Like, you don't even know what I sound like. Yeah, yeah. So shortly after that, you were featured on like MTV and stuff like that. Did that come specifically from that competition? No, no, no. Actually, the the competition like, kind of only gave me clout in like the city because it was a big mm -hmm. deal in the city, but it didn't really get you know recognition outside of that. I mean, that was when I was really young too. So I mean, Machine Gun Kelly wasn't a hot name at the at that time. Right, right. right. And so you ended up uh, putting out more singles and stuff like that. Eventually, you get picked up uh, by the Cleveland Cavaliers. They play your song every home game. Like, how does that feel? Oh, man, it's great. I was actually uh, just, just sitting courtside at the All-Star game with Dan Gilbert, who's the owner of the Cavs, you know what I'm saying? So it's just a beautiful thing to see a, a young Cleveland motherfucker, along with the other Cleveland motherfuckers I got with me, um, you know, just be able to take it to a, 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 a business level like that, I guess you could say. Like, you know, that's like a, you know, an uh, older established gentleman who right. is looking out for a young rapper named Machine Gun fucking Kelly. You know what I mean? And it's just like, you know, the, the love in the city is that hardcore that it makes both our worlds combine. And, uh, I mean, it worked out. Right. And then shortly after that, you go straight to South by Southwest, your first time ever there. And Sean Combs is there watching you. Yeah, actually, that was my second time there. When, 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 Puff, oh, okay. when Puff came, that was my second time. The first time I came, uh, we were doing really my, uh, minor showcases. Right. And, uh, yeah, so my second time, Puff came, saw us live. And, you know, after that, it was a wrap, really. What happened? Like, what was that meeting like? Did he just come up to you after the show and say, hey, I want to work with you? Like, how quickly did you guys end up deciding to work together? Well, we had met before that. That's the misconception is okay. that, like, people think that was our first time. I mean, that was the first time he saw me live. Mm -hmm. But we had partied in Vegas together before. And that was when I was, uh, I was underage at that time. <laughs> so, like, I was using Puff swag the whole time. Like, I'm with him, I'm with him, I'm with him. Hey, I'm in here, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, that was one of those type things. <laughs> So you've had anthems for the Cavs, WrestleMania, uh, Thursday Night Football. How do you top that now? And these troubled kids. I have anthems for those little motherfuckers every fucking time they switch on their CD player and they have the right song on. You know what I'm saying? I make, that, make sure that's the – because I, I don't do this shit for another accolades. I do this shit for those kids, man. Right, right, right. That's just something I really wanted to talk to you about. Uh, your video, uh, See My Tears. Yeah. Is an amazing song, dude. I cry every Thank single you. time I watch that video, man. I show these guys a song on the way, and it's fucking incredible. It comes from like a really raw, really emotional place. Like, tell us a little bit about the uh, concept behind the song and your life going into it. Uh, I mean, at that point, it was when I was I had just signed the deal, and I was super had had writer's block. I mean, a lot all that pressure kind of had like it sucked, but it ended up kind of getting to me, mm -hmm. and so I wasn't writing anything, and I. They, they saw that. They saw that I wasn't writing anything, and they're like, yo, we need some material, man. And they flew me out to New York and were like, hey, they put me in Puff Studio. Wow. And um, they were kind of like, yo, we need you to actually do a song. And I was like, fuck, dude, I can't fuck. I can't write shit. Like, I can't, like, I can't, I can't deal with this. And I was kind of like one of those things, like, I wasn't, I didn't think I was ready to, for, for, for I wouldn't say mainstream, but whatever the fuck that, Just you know, yeah, I wasn't ready for the big time. And I'm, I'm, and I'm still so underground minded, too. Mm -hmm. Um 
and I, I just went in there and, and actually I mean the story I'll, the full story I'll tell eventually I don't feel like the world's ready yet but you know some things happened in the studio and you know it was kind of one of those frustrative right type things and I wrote it and I went in there and just like poured my heart out on it and it ended up I, we ended up took, taking the song back to Cleveland I got a six piece choir to come and sing right. the rain and we just made it, and, you know, and me and Justice League ended up like composing a whole orchestra behind it. It was just, it was just a beautiful song, man. Up, the video is my favorite part about the song, actually. Right. And it's all real documentary type footage. Right, and how, like I think the lyrics are, are fucking great. And how important do you think perspective, keeping perspective, is from where you came from and where you are now? Like, how important do you think perspective is in maintaining success and not fucking it up? I think that that just comes by keeping a consistent format, which is always making sure they get those see my tears amongst those wild boys. So I'm gonna always give them those bangers, and I'm gonna always give them those cry, like something to cry to. Right. Uh, so, do you think like being on the verge of being evicted and stuff like that gave you the fearlessness? Like you were, you're not scared of going broke because you were already broke. Do you think that that has something to do with why like you just kept going when shit was down? Well, you know, it's, it's funny you say that. I never thought about it like that, but it, that makes perfect sense. But actually, you know, sometimes my, my, my records were written because I wanted to go back to being broke again. Right. If that makes sense. You know what I'm saying? Like, sometimes I'll be like, I'm never going broke. And I say that in records, but, like, in my mind sometimes I'm like, damn, man. Sometimes I wish I could just go back to walking in a mall and no one giving a fuck that I was there. And people, you know, people dogging me and people discounting me and not having any faith in me. Like, because that's what inspires records and shit. And I, I, I guess that um, now I just got to accept that, you know, I, I, I have an extended family and that's of those fans and they really do believe in me and shit so I just take that inspiration now yeah so you originally took the inspiration from people hating on you not yeah. wanting you to, to succeed now and well I mean I still think they hate on me now man you know like right. even, even the champion song when I put out about Fader you know like mm -hmm. it's just like it, it sucks when a magazine that like you know you're fucking with a magazine or something like that and you're like damn I'm getting discriminated against just because of the type of clothes I wear or because of the, the style that I am or am not you know it's just it sucks man yeah uh like, do you actually, in the video, do you really personally call your fans? Oh, yeah, yeah that, that was real. That was real. 100% real, yeah. How important do you think it is to maintain that connection on that level? Um, I mean, it's kind of hard on that level just because there's so many kids, you know what I'm saying? So, it's, I mean, it's hard for me to do that. But, my, but the thing that I can do as an artist is go out there on that stage and make them feel like they're right here with me. Right. You know, like, it's, it's, it's not going out there and having shades on and being too, like, you know, it's, it's about going out there and, and really establishing that connection and making them feel like when they walk out, like, damn, man, that, I really learned something, and that kid, like, that, that's my man, you know, like, one of those type of things, like, right. that's my fucking guy. Hell yeah. Are there any uh, collaborations, because you're still a young guy and you're coming up in your success, like, are there any collaborations that have blown your mind that you've worked with yet? Uh, I mean, I think on this Black Flag mixtape, I, I did pretty damn good with collaborations. Like, you know, me and Kellen Quinn from Sleeping With Sirens, who's a band I toured with on Warp Tour. And uh, we did a cover of Rise Against Swing Life Away mm -hmm. uh, on this new Black Flag mixtape that's coming out in April. Uh, me and Wiz worked together. Me, Pusha T, Meek got a joint. Me, French Montana. Nice. It's been beautiful, sure. man. You know. Has Puff Daddy, P. Diddy ever uh, made you walk six miles to get him a cupcake? Never, never. I, and, and I said that in Champions. I said, not the shake of grab, boy. Sign to the bad boy, but I ain't getting cheesecake. Nope, this ain't making another band home, boy. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm established enough to where I don't need to do shit like that. I earned my spot. Hell yeah. All right, we've been asking everybody this. What's the most messed up that you thought you've had this week? Uh, s spitting water into a girl's butthole and <laughs> opening it up like this and being like, use your muscles to push it out. And they go... And the water spray like sprays out. Nice, that's a good one. All right, and where do you want people to find you online? Uh, they they can find me however they want to find me, man. I'm not. I don't. I don't, I don't promote internet shit. I'm a people person. All right, cool. And uh, lace up, motherfucker. Lace up. Black flag coming soon. That's what it is. What up? This is Kid Machine Gun Kelly, and right now y'all are watching AnyHipHop.com. You little bitch.